It's an eternal, amazing when we have baptisms. Um, I was uh, sort of um, tearing my hair out a bit this week because the first pool I put up had four holes in it that I found and then it still went down after a pair of So being in bargains save the day, guys. Yeah? We like being in bargains. And uh, the 40 quid they produced a new baptism pool. Um, so uh, long may they, may they remain. Um, but uh, it's, just, it's just great that um, people are starting a new life in Christ. And, um, uh, and yeah, the church is growing. So, but um, Helen read this passage. We've, we've been looking at um, Acts, these early chapters of Acts. And uh, how many of you know that full-blooded Christianity, um, time and again, uh, produces opposition, produces difficulty? And um, uh, it, it, it arrived pretty quickly in the book of Acts. Uh, chapter 3, Peter and John, this, uh, the guy in the gate is when he's healed. Uh, they preach and they get arrested. Um, and um, we have it so easy, don't we? I have not yet been arrested for preaching the gospel. Um, uh, the police did stop us once when we were doing healing on the streets. And I said, you know, have you got permission? I said, I don't need it. I'm the vicar. This is my parish. I have the cure of souls. <laughs> they didn't quite know how to handle it. Like they went away. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, that's the great thing about, about just getting on the streets, getting public with our faith. But it will get us often into trouble. And in some parts of the world you get into real trouble. If you try to do healing on the streets in Saudi Arabia, I hate to think what would happen. But I mean, and, and Christians are incredibly brave. Incredibly brave. I mean, in, in Iran, uh, in, in so many countries, um, Christians are incredibly, incredibly brave. So, um, and, and I put here, responding to the rage. And we'll come to why I've used that word, rage. Um, but the, um, when the apostles, they come back, Peter and John come back, and they have this uh, amazing prayer meeting. And the first thing they focus on is what are called the rage of rulers. And I've used this word because it's the word that we've got here in um, verse 25. You spoke through the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, through the mouth of your servant, our Father David. This is Psalm 2. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth take their stand, the rulers gather together against the Lord and against his mighty one. And then, indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles people of Israel to conspire against your holy servant Jesus. And what they're saying here is that this opposition to Jesus was prophesied. Yeah, Psalm 2. We get the prophecy that this has happened. Um, and then it was fulfilled in Jesus' death. Psalm 2 is fulfilled in Jesus' death. Um, and then it continues against the church. Verse 29. They say, um, now we will consider their threats. So they've been threatened already. Serious threats. Um, but they weren't surprised that there were problems. Yeah, if people don't like the Christian faith, don't be surprised about it. It's sad. And we don't want to be, you know, pain in the neck. There are there are sometimes you, you get Christians who, um, and I think um, Jim Henson was telling us about a friend or someone who knew him in, in a previous parish who wanted to speak to someone about Jesus every day. But after a while, when she saw people, you know, people who uh, she knew, they had a sort of hunting look um, because, you know, they were being pursued. Um, and we don't want to, you know, be socially insensitive. But we do have to be bold, as we'll come, we'll come on to that. And uh, it's
it's true for us as well. Jesus warned us in John, uh, I think it's John 15. Just read. Go back to that for a moment. Uh, verse 18. If the world hates you, keep in mind it hated me first. If you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I've chosen you out of the world. That's why the world hates you. Okay? So, if you belong to the world, they love you. If we, if we went with, with the culture, uh, fitting in with everything, no problems. You don't have a problem. But if we, if we follow Jesus, there will be problems. Because the world is still in rebellion against God. Um, and we're like a resistance movement to that. And today we're out of step with the culture in so many areas. We're out of step with the culture on sexuality. We're out of step with the culture in, in all sorts of ways. Uh, I met with some friends this week, uh, other clergy, and um, uh, one of them, his church is um, withholding some of their finance because of the um, issues that are going on in the wider church. And they had a meeting with some of the diocesan officials and they went through all the costs of the clergy. You know, how much it costs to keep a clergyman in post. And one of the, the items in the cost was net zero. And this guy's church warden said, well, why are we having to pay for net zero? I mean, it's a good thing. You know, we want to deal with climate change. But he said, our job is not actually saving the planet. Our job is to save souls. That's what the church is here for. Other people have the job of saving the planet. And if you're a very clever scientist, You'll be working on that. I'm not, but other people are. And we need to support them. But our job, we need to focus on what we're called to do. We're called to save souls. Does that make sense? Um, so there will, we will be out of step, and it's not always popular. So how are we to respond? Well, there are one or two ways not to respond. I call it the response of fear. You can get quite, quite frightened. I don't want to wind up my friends. I don't want to be out, out of step with my family. They don't want to have that feeling, probably. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, we, we, we like to be loved. Um, and so we can get afraid and have the response of fear. Um, and the first response is basically preparing to retreat. That's um, well, just a picture of, of, of a monastery. Um, uh, you know, it's stuck on top of the mountain. It's very safe. It's surrounded by walls. And we retreat into our churches, into our, into our sort of safe space. Um, and we're, we're holding on to the gospel. We're being faithful. But we've basically retreated. Um, that is a great temptation. Um, you know, we're, we're staying faithful. But we're just going to keep it all private. Not going to rock the boat. Um, and that's been a temptation through the ages. Uh, the other temptation is, is planning to be relevant. I just want to be, we're, we're going to, as, as we said, we're going to fit in, we're going to belong to the world. So that we don't cause a problem. And we're reaching out and we're relevant. Um, and as, G, John, as Jesus said, if you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. Uh, and we think, well, we need to connect with people, we need to love people. Absolutely true. Well, that's who's been unloving. And some Christians are, and they're pain in the neck. Um, and say harsh, horrible things. But there's no cause for that. But there's also no cause for moving the boundaries of Christian faith and Christian practice and good behavior. And that's the tension. How do I love people and, and call them to repentance and say, actually, yeah, I love, we love people, but we love them personally, but, but hate the sin. Um, so that's a responsibility for the things we don't need to fear. You see, Psalm 2 goes on. This is just amazing. Um, you know, why do the nations rage, etc. And the next bit of Psalm 2 says, The Lord in heaven laughs. The rebellion of the nations, the rage of the nations is laughable. Because, God says, I have set my king on my holy hill. The, the, the rebellion of the nations is, is basically pathetic because Jesus 
his place on the throne of the universe. We've been singing about that. Jesus reigns, yeah? And he created the universe. That's why the prayer starts off. You know, the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. I mean, you know, you think about how, how big the universe is. God made that and we're trying to rebel against it. It's not very clever. So, and they knew that. So this is their response. This is the, the, the right response. Okay? The response. I call it the response of faith. Um, that's a picture of, of Billy Graham. But Billy was great at this. Um, to proclaim, proclaim the gospel, to speak with boldness. They pray. Now, Lord, consider their threats, verse 29. Enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Yeah? Um, and sometimes, actually, calling people to repentance, calling people to faith in Jesus is not popular. We require courage. Uh, and uh, uh, to be in situations, you might be at work or with family. Sometimes the people closest to us is hardest, isn't it? You know, it's, it's when you, your immediate family, and they know you so well, uh, but it, it, and it's hard to challenge them to, to talk. And um, I've never been very successful with my brothers, um, but one of my brothers came to Christ before he died, which was wonderful. Because uh, 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 because Helen had a prophetic word for him, and it just it just got through the defences. Um, and to speak the word with boldness doesn't mean you know get the Bible and just bash them over the head you need to believe, but but to ask God for that word that will get through their defences, whatever it is that gets through their defences. Um, but to speak the word with boldness. Um, because the forgiveness of sins is only through Jesus. And we need to tell people that there is a cost, but if the blessing far outweighs it. So that's, and, and, and Billy Graham was so amazing at that. Preaching the gospel faithfully for, you know, decade after decade, right to the end of his life, with boldness. But it's not just that. Because the second thing, I call it power. Um, verse 30. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform miraculous signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant Jesus. You see, these two things get together. The signs, the miracles support the message that, that God is real. People need an encounter with God that's real. Um, and and um, and that's what we're about here. It's what this, what we've been about at this church is to preach the word and to demonstrate it with signs and wonders. Why Natan's testimony was so great, yeah, but that he had experienced healing and uh, is prepared to testify to that. Um, and loads of people, you know, many of you here have experienced healing, have experienced the power of God. And, and stuff has happened, you can't explain it. Yeah. Coincidences, it may be coincidences that have happened. You may, it happens once, it's a coincidence. It happens two, three, four times, and that's God. That's, 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 that's God working in power. And we need the power of God, friends, in this country more than anyone else, anywhere else. We, we, and we're all involved in it. Okay. It's easy to think, oh, well, that's the apostles. You know, well, that was the first century. It doesn't happen today. It does happen today. Okay? That's what we stand for. We stand for the word of God being proclaimed and the power of God being demonstrated. The love of God being demonstrated. You know when someone gets healed, they discover there is a God. He is good. And he knows me. That's pretty important. Three pretty important things to learn, isn't it? Uh, and, and that's why it's all right. That's why I, I pray for people. I pray for people who are having trouble all the time. They don't always get healed. I prayed for a guy last week. He had um, damage to kill his tendon. Um, and um, 
I said to him this week, how are you getting on? I could see he was hobbling actually. He said, well, I just, I, 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 I did twice as much running as physio, physiotherapist told me to. I mean, you can't help some people, you know? I mean, you know, so I have no idea what, what, whether God did anything and, and whether he did begin to get healed and then he really injured himself again. Oh well, never mind. Hey, but, 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 but my point is, don't give up. Don't give up. It's always worth having a go. Okay, don't give up. And I have never, I've never prayed for someone. They've not got healed and they've got cross. People are always grateful. Even the, 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 most, the most hardened non-Christians I've prayed for are grateful. And, and everyone can have a go. Don't, don't believe the light, oh, I'm not gifted, so I can't do it. Okay? We all are called, I think it was um, John Wimber who said, we're all called to play. I don't know why John Wimber said that. We're all, we all get to play. We all get to play. Get to play. Yeah, we all get to play. Um, but, and here's the, the, the problem, we can't do it. What I've just told you is impossible. So look at the last bit, verse 31. After they had prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. You see, it's impossible unless this happens. Unless we have a fresh encounter, I think that's what the, the place being shaken. Um, I think if, you know if this building was shaken, we'd all be absolutely terrified. It was an earthquake, and it probably would be. But we need a fresh meeting and encounter with God. That's why we come on a Sunday, okay? That's why you should be here on to meet with God, to have an encounter with Him, to get to, um, even in our own personal prayer times, to have an encounter with God. Lena had the me, you know, shaking on her bed because the Holy Spirit was touching her. We need, we just need that all the time. Because, because my faith goes, you know, sinks down pretty quickly. And I need a fresh touch from God. And I need not only a fresh uh, encounter, I need a fresh anointing from God. Uh, a fresh anointing. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Not just two or three of them. They were all filled. How many people want to be, you want to be filled and fresh with the Holy Spirit? Yeah? Okay, so about four people want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Right, okay, well, okay, we're getting there. Um, four? We've got four. That's enough. Uh, that'll be enough for a revival. Uh, and Otherwise, we can't do it. It's just too hard, it's too discouraging, it's too difficult, it's impossible. I can't heal anyone except by the power of God. I don't want to tell anyone about Jesus except by the power of God. So it's not a law, it's something inside me, that the Word of God is inside me like a fire, and that comes from the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is in me for my benefit, and the Holy Spirit is on me for the benefit of others. So I just need a fresh anointing. You know, he said, I'll never, I'll, he will never leave us. I will never fail you or forsake you. That's the promise of God, okay? But I can live in such a way that I've got no spiritual power. And I need the, a fresh filling, a fresh anointing. So that's what we're going to, to do now is, so let's stand.